Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of Ham Radio Mobile CW Station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Got some, got a whole bunch of acquisitions now in this uh, big number eight. Seems like with Ham Radio, you just keep wanting to add more stuff. This is the Pal Star Antenna Tuner, the AT500 which I can use to either directly connect the antenna to the radio, actually two different antennas, coax one or coax two, or I can use the tuner to uh, tune either coax one or coax two. But right now, coax one is an eight foot whip antenna on a ball mount with 13 feet, about 13 feet of coaxial cable coming into the coax one. Coax 2 is the automatic, uh, pardon me, the active tuning antenna system, ATAS, from Yesu that I just put on there. And I have tested it on uh, 21 and 24 megahertz. It will tune, but you have to switch it to direct. You don't want to have that tuner in there and also have the antenna tuned. There's the radio, the um, FT-857D. Right now I've got both of the... Um, whip antenna and the automatic uh, active tuning antenna system tuned for this band 24.900 megahertz to be exact just for show there's the CB radio just underneath the Radio Shack SWR power meter that SWR power meter is for the CB radio only because it's much more sensitive than the meter in the PAL star Although the meter in the PAL star is also connected in there. I can I can make the PAL star tune on 27 megahertz, of course. And it'll tune that 8-foot whip to resonance. I don't know how much I'm going to use that CB. The CB is connected to the marine battery underneath, the, just behind it. So is the FT-857D, and so is the PAL star uh, metering system, all connected to the marine battery. This radio down here, I don't, I don't even remember the model number, but it's a 2 meter FM Yesu transceiver. That one goes to the ignition, uh, you know, the cigarette lighter adapter, making sure to run low power whenever possible. That's what that low means down there. I don't know how well you can see that lighter adapter thingy there, but that powers the two meter radio and it also powers this little Radio Shack speaker that I got. That's really neat because it uh, it amplifies so the CW side tone is nice and loud. I can hear everything a lot better that way. So that's that's the interior here. Now let's see if I can get down out of this big number eight without injuring myself. I just read in uh, Fox News an article to the effect that Caffeine can have a whole spectrum of negative effects on you if you consume it in excessive amounts, which I doubtless do. And all of those symptoms, just about every one of them I've got, I was almost starting to think I'm getting multiple sclerosis or something. But no, I'm just drinking too much bloody coffee and drinking too much bloody diet Mountain Dew. i got to lay off that stuff, but you know, that stuff is addictive. I'm not kidding. I wonder if they have support groups for addicts. There's the, um, for addicts of those things. There's the automatic tuning antenna system. Now that cylinder there is apparently an inductor. When in this uh, thing, when you tune it, you have to program the radio and it'll, it'll slide that thing up and down in there and find the tap on the inductor. And I've gotten a very good match on 21 and 24 megahertz so far. This thing is maybe five feet tall. And then it gives you a one-to-one -one SWR. I've talked about what happens when you have a shortened antenna and a perfect SWR. You inevitably have some loss in your system, and you can al actually calculate that loss if you have a perfect match. Uh, I'm not real, real... Uh... Well, I did contact Russia from the parking lot of the uh, Lynn's Dakota Mart supermarket this morning on 21 megahertz with this automatic... Uh, active, I keep saying automatic, active tuning antenna system. It's sort of semi-automatic. On top of the vehicle there is a two-meter whip 
5 8 wave 2 meter whip with a mag mount on it. And here of course is the CB whip chopped off, one foot chopped off of it to make it 8 feet long instead of 9 feet so it'll directly resonate on 10 meters and that is one heck of an effective antenna on 10 meters. So I can tune with that PAL star, I can force feed that thing and make it take power all the way from 40 meters up to 6 meters. It might even I might even be able to get it to take power on 80 meters but I generally do not drive at night and 80 meters is a nighttime band so I don't see the point. It would also be extraordinarily inefficient. Uh, it, it would work in a pinch I mean, if I ab absolutely needed it. But as for now, and there's the trunk, or the trunk, the truck bed full of old, beat up garbage, implements, broken electric heaters, pieces of wood, scrap, and snow for weight, which uh, it's only March 21st. We got two good solid months of winter left here in the White Hills of Dakota Territory. There's my Pride and Joy license plate. I wonder what people think, you know, with the regular uh, FM broadcast receiver antenna and these other three antennas. The Porcupine Mobile sits in the driveway of a house in the Black Hills. I'm just finishing up that book about ham radio and just finished up the mobile and portable chapter. And I learned a lot as I traipsed on out to Wyoming and ran this big number eight with all this hardware in it. I learned a lot, and I'll tell you all about it in the upcoming book. It'll be out late this year. It's about ham and shortwave radio. It's not exclusively uh, devoted to ham radio. So there you be. That'll about do it. Still got to test this automatic, uh, yep, well, that's what I'm going to call it then, ATAS, Automatic Tuning Antenna System. That's not the official name for it, but it's by Yesu, and <clears throat> I've read mixed reviews about this thing most notable negative reviews involve after a certain period of time the mechanics in there will fail for some people so we'll see you know mechanical devices like that uh, motorized tuners they eventually will fail so you send them in and you have them fixed just like any other machine will eventually break if it's sophisticated enough it seems to work pretty good though I'm getting reception comparable to or better than this thing on the 24 megahertz band right now, so I'm going to do some signal comparison tests and find out what's up. Stan Jibalisco, W1, Good Vibrations, signing off. From the Black Hills, now white, white to, for some time, I suppose. Until next time, 73, and so long.